Rini and Golia joining us. Uh, we'll be here back, the I'm whole back. rest of the day to get you all caught up. But let's talk about the Pirates who return a lot of talent uh, here for Mike Houston's fourth season to take a look at uh, a little bit of info about the Pirates for this season. Their 2021 record, 7-5, and 5-3 five, five and three in the American. We need some good key non-conference games to, to really start off with North Carolina State. Yeah, and they ended on a good note last year, winning three or four. Of course, we talked about they got to the Military Bowl, weren't able to play. The game got canceled, but you're right. I mean, that non-conference, that North Carolina State game in conference, boy, what a showdown that is early September 3rd. And then, of course, BYU October 28th. So, really nice non-conference schedule for Mike Houston and ECU. As we mention him, let's bring him on in. Coach Houston, appreciate the time. Thank you for joining us. Your fourth season, you have a lot of talent. Uh, you know, being able to bring Holton back. What are you most excited for with what you have on this roster? Well, I just think the, the biggest thing that excites us is, you know, the student athletes that we have. And, you know, when I took the job in 2019, um, you started uh, with a vision and you started uh, building the roster. And as we sit here going into year four, um, you know, you have a roster that's been in the program. You have a roster that you've recruited and built. Uh, and, you know, we believe in these young men, uh, and they are very committed to what, uh, you know, what we're trying to do here. And so you just really feel like for the first time you have great stability. Uh, you feel like you have the talent where you need to have the talent. Uh, you have the experience. Uh, and it's always good when you return your quarterback. So, uh, you know, we really, we really like our roster going into the season. and we'll set several more records. Let's get to Chuck Sullivan now, who's going to facilitate some of the questions from our media members, Coach. Thanks, Chris. We can go right to questions. Please use the raise hand feature on the, on the Zoom to get into the queue. And we can start with Kyle Williams from the News & Observer, please. Um, hey, Coach. Uh, you first game of the seasons against, um, in, you know, in-state, NC State, um, they're returning a lot of their defense from the previous season. Um, how big of a test is that first, especially with them playing them first, how big of a test is that for your team? Well, I think it's a big game right out of the gate. You know, uh, you know, NC State had a great year last year. Uh, Dave's done a great job building that program there. Um, you know, it's, it, you know, they're talking this is, you know, this maybe is the best uh, NC State team that they've had. Um, so, you know, right out of the gate, you know, you'll, you'll go up against a stiff opponent. Uh, but, you know, but we like our team. Uh, it's going to be a great game. Uh, we're really excited we have it here at home. Uh, we expect a full stadium. So 51,000 uh, Pirates here to greet them. Uh, so it's just uh, we're really excited about the matchup. Okay, we'll go next to Brian Bailey, please, WNCT in Greenville. All right, Coach, when you hit the ground running coming up this week in order not to get off to a slow start, what are some of the things you want to do at practices, the first couple of uh, practices to start things off? Well, you know, we talked uh, last, uh, last week before we broke, um, you know, for this discretionary week. Uh, we talked as a team. Um, and just, you know, with the experience we have back, and really it's the first time we've had experience like this. Um, you know, I expect us to look like a really good football team day one. Uh, you know, it's, there's really no excuses not to. Uh, the guys that are going to be on the field, you know, in the two deep are guys that have played a lot of ball. Uh, they've been in the system. Uh, they've been in our program. Uh, so we expect to be playing at a pretty high level right out of the gate. And I think that should, you know, translate into uh, game day starting September 3rd. We'll go next to Steve and I go, please, from Hoist the Colors. Coach, you guys picked to finish six in the preseason poll. Uh, is that something you'll, you'll use as motivation after being tied for third at the end of last year, or do you just kind of ignore that stuff? Well, I haven't seen the preseason poll, so it's uh, you, you bring it up. It's the first I've heard of it, but uh, really haven't cared about anything preseason-wise in the past, and not going to start now. Uh, you know what we do on the field and what we earn uh, will be how our season is measured. And, uh, you know, we're really interested in that postseason standing more than anything preseason. Okay, take the next one from Patrick Johnson, please. 94-3 the game. Hey, Coach, uh, obviously with uh, Ehlers coming back, your running backs coming back, there's a lot of excitement there. Could you just talk a little bit about the, uh, the receivers that you brought in, particularly through the portal and, and where you feel like the offensive line is going into the season? Well, I think first, you know, just talking about our fronts, I think both uh, offensively and defensively, uh, we feel very good about our offensive front and our defensive front. Uh, 
I think we have good size, good athleticism, uh, very good depth. Uh, you know, talking about the offensive line, uh, you know, you talk about wanting to have a starting five. I don't, I don't think we have a starting five. I think we've got, you know, a two deep right there where I can't tell you how it's going to shake out during preseason camp exactly who's going to be in there. Uh, to me, that's a good thing this year uh, because I think we do have uh, more than just five guys that can go out there, you know, September 3rd. Um, the receiving core, uh, you know, with, you know, Tyler declaring last year, uh, Audie graduating, uh, and, you know, just some of, the, some of the things there in that room, we felt like we needed to address that with some experience pretty quick. Uh, we do have some young guys that uh, played some last year that will, you know, be in the rotation again this year, but we felt like we needed some older additions. Uh, so, we're, you know, we're excited about those guys that we brought in. I think Isaiah Winstead has been, uh, you know, a guy that's had a lot of, success uh, at the FBS level. Uh, he's done a great job this summer of coming in and, uh, you know, establishing himself work ethic wise, establishing himself from experience and leadership wise as a guy that can be trusted. Uh, excited about Jalen Johnson, uh, you know, transfer from Georgia, played in the national championship game, uh, you know, was a good player at Georgia. Excited to have him here with us. Um, and so I think that you, when you start looking at those guys, uh, in addition to what else we have coming back, uh, we feel good about our receiving core. Okay, we'll go next to Eric Gullickson, WITN-TV, please. Hey, Coach. Um, you mentioned it a little bit about a bunch of the new additions, and you talked in the spring about a lot of young guys coming in. I know you guys have been doing workouts and summer you know, conditioning stuff. How have they kind of fit into the group as you guys are getting ready to kick off fall camp? Well, I think, you know, especially this year, um, with the experience we have coming back, you know, it, it's going to be hard for a freshman to, to get on the field. Um, you know, when we, when we looked at, look at our, look at our team in 2020, you know, you started a ton of freshmen, uh, you know, those guys are still here. Uh, and so you have third year guys that have a lot of experience, uh, to where I think, you know, in order for a freshman to get on the field and play this year, um, he'll have to be a pretty special player. Uh, I think we've got a couple that may, uh, but certainly we don't feel the need to have to push anybody out there, you know, this year. We'll go next to Dan Tortora. Wake up call DT, please. Good morning, Coach. Uh, just, you know, looking at the fact that this conference has obviously been affected by realignment multiple times and will be affected after this season with three going out and six coming in. How do you look at college football kind of as a whole and, and your thoughts on having to obviously coach against the teams that you know and then having to learn these teams that are going to be coming in next year? Well, you know, I, I think that uh, everybody is um, – curious to see how the next couple of years are going to go. Uh, you know, college football is changing. It's changing pretty quick. I think with, you know, what the SEC and the Big Ten are doing, uh, it's going to have a trickle-down effect on all the other conferences. Um, you know, the American Conference has been a highly competitive conference, uh, you know, ever since its uh, start. And uh, we're excited to be a part of it. Uh, you know, Cincinnati, UCF, and Houston uh, have been great programs in this conference. Uh, you know, them departing. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll go on and try to, you know, do the same thing in, in the Big 12, uh, but we'll have six schools coming in, so the conference is going to change. Um, at the end of the day, you know, our focus is going to be purely on East Carolina. Um, I think we have a chance, just like I thought when I came here uh, in 2019, we have a chance to establish ourselves as one of the top programs in the country. Uh, I think we've got a great fan base. Uh, we've got a great school to recruit to. Uh, the administration here, uh, both on campus and within the athletic department, is committed to football. Uh, so, you know, we're excited about the future of pirate football. Okay, we'll take two more. We'll go to Trace Trilco first, Sons of UCF. Uh, Coach, how have you seen Holton grow as a quarterback during uh, his years with you? Well, I think, you know, okay. just the experience that he has, um, the maturity that he's developed. Uh, has been so important. You know, when, when I got here, you know, you had a guy that had some ability, had had some success his freshman year, uh, but he had to learn how to be, you know, a great game manager, a great leader, a great teammate. Uh, you know, had to learn how to, you know, not try to do it all himself, to trust his teammates. Uh, and I really feel like, you know, the second half of last year, 
Holton played at a very high level. Uh, he's had a great off season. Uh, so coming into this year, I think he brings experience. He brings, I think he is, his body is in the best shape it's been in. Uh, he's really worked hard on his mechanics. Uh, I think he has a lot of confidence in the pieces around him. So I think that uh, now you have a guy that uh, you know, is a great leader of a, of a unit as opposed to just you know, trying to get a guy to go out there and kind of do it all himself. We'll take the last one for Coach from Leo Haggerty, please. <clears throat> Coach, you play a predominance of your games in the South. How important is it to have that rotation, especially in your offensive and defensive lines, to have five, six, or seven guys that can play? Well, you know, I think that uh, that's important no matter where you geographically play your games. But, you know, the reality is, uh, you know, you're going to see a lot of heat the first half of the season, uh, especially with the first four at home here in Greenville. Um, you know, temperature, you know, September 3rd, 12 o'clock kickoff, you're probably going to be in the, in the mid-90s with pretty high humidity. So having depth on the fronts, uh, having guys that you can rotate in and out with little drop-off or no drop-off, uh, I think will only help us. Um, you know, we worked very, very hard to develop uh, that defensive line room because it was virtually non-existent when I got here. Uh, but we're excited about the kids in that room, and they've worked very, very hard. Uh, and I'm excited to see what they're going to do this year. Appreciate the time. Head coach Mike Houston, appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Go Pirates. <laughs> you know all about the humidity and playing yeah. in the South being in Orlando, uh, but it is a tough schedule to get going and needing to build up that depth so that you have players that are able to make it through the fourth quarter. And it's one that NC State better not sleep on going sure. in there, opening up the season. But, I, you know, I told people it was going to take three years for Mike Houston to really kind of turn that program around, change the culture, and it was year three last year, seven wins, a bowl invite. So he's got that program yeah. going the way it needs to go. It's also a trend. We'll look at other teams that in year three really started to see the turnaround. Here is a look at ECU's schedule. How about towards the back end? BYU, Cincinnati, Houston, all there right in a row. Yeah, and, and on the road. And, but then you get you know, UCF in there as well. Of course, yeah. that's four game stretch. UCF, Woo. BYU. Cincinnati in Houston is just torturous. When we started off the show, you were intrigued about the quarterback play in this league, and the Pirates have the one that you want to talk about, and Holton Aylers returns for a fifth season. Over 10,000 career yards, 69 career touchdowns, most experienced quarterback in the conference. What does he provide with his legs and his arm? His toughness. I, I, just, I just love his strength. He can run the ball. Um, and just we talked about his experience, fifth year starter, 10,000 yards passing. Um, he understands what he needs to do and what he doesn't does not need to do for that offense. So him leading the way is just it's a great thing for that program. So I expect big things out of Holton Aylers this season. He also has some guys around yeah. him in the running back room that he can pass things off to. All right, let's get to some of our players. Holton is one of them and linebacker Miles Berry also joining us from but hey guys, appreciate the time. When we were talking with Coach, basically he kept talking about experience, experience for you guys now in his fourth year. How have you already, Holton, I'll start with you, seen that experience develop through the spring and throughout the practices? Yeah, it's been great. Um, I mean, I think anytime you return the guys that we're returning and the experience that we're returning, um, I mean, just all season runs smoothly, um, spring runs smoothly, and you know, just getting ready for camp, knowing what to expect for the season, you know, getting your body and your mind right. Um, it is, is really important. Just having guys that have been in that position before is it, huge for us. Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure most of our guys returning um, have started a, a good chunk of game. So it's, it's really exciting for us. It's been really smooth so far. Yeah, and I, I also agree uh, with the amount of experience that we do have. Uh, everybody is on one mission. We have one goal, and we all know what we need to do to achieve that goal. So we're all just, you know, tunnel vision and we have a mission this year, and with the experience that we have, uh, that leadership will be able to carry us to that. Okay, we'll go right into, right into questions for the, for the two student athletes. We'll start with Patrick Mason from um, the uh, Daily Reflector in Greenville, please. Hey, this question is uh, for Holton, really. Um, I mean, having played a lot of football, you know, through high school, college, you've definitely uh, thrown to some different receivers. So I'm, I'm kind of curious how that experience and maybe what works best for you and kind of, you know, forming a bond and connection right away with some of these new guys this offseason. 
Yeah, it's always important um, to have to have chemistry with your receivers. I um, mean, you know, obviously, we got some new guys coming in that are going to play big roles for us. And you know, that's what the offseason's for, though. Um, they've played a lot of snaps, too, in college football just because they haven't here. Um, doesn't mean they haven't played a lot of snaps in general. So um, they're pretty experienced, too, just, just getting – a feel for them, you know, what they like, where they like the ball to be on certain routes, you know, how they how they like to look, just the little things um, through the offense, through the routes that we can connect on, just timing thing. But a lot of that comes from camp too. I mean, we go for a straight month um, practicing pretty much every single day um, against, you know, full competition with our defense, one versus one. So um, a lot of that will come then. I mean, during the all season, you just try to work on timing, um, anticipation, just, just try to kind of, like I said, just get a feel for where they like the ball, you know, where they they like to back shoulder it? Do they like to catch it on the run? And just little things like that. Let's go to Kyle Williams from the News and Observer, please. Oh, what's up, guys? Uh, Coach Houston um, spoke earlier about the experience that the team has. Um, and so for you, Holden, how does the um, experience and, you know, having that formative run, that uh, really impressive running game returning, how does that help you guys going into week one against uh, NC State defense returning most of their guys? Yeah, it helps a ton. I mean, we're returning most of our guys, too. So, uh, I mean, kind of like you said, we're returning two of the top running backs in our conference, really, in the country. I mean, I'd take those guys over anyone. So, uh, um, just it, I mean, that's the running game is quarterback's best friend. It can just help, only help me out, only help the offense out and the team out. So, um, I mean, anytime you can just hand the ball off and let those guys go to work, we're, we're going to. I mean, they're the workhorse of our offense. Um, so, just excited to see those guys work and compete this year and, uh, you know, open things up for the passing game. Go next to Brian Bailey, please, WNCT. Hey, this question is from Miles. Miles, how tough is it to go against Holton and that offense, the running backs with Keaton and Rajay and, and in practice, especially in camp, because it's, you know, it's a grind anyway, but how hard is that? And how does that make you a better defense? Oh, it's, it's, it's very tough, you know, going against Holton. Uh, I've been going against Holton for years now. So uh, sometimes we're kind of cheating off each other because he knows some of my tendencies. I know some of his. Uh, same with Keaton and Rajay. Uh, Keaton is a shiftier back, so me as a linebacker, I have to be at a certain level of discipline and I have to really focus on my technique when tackling him. Rajay is a physical shifty downhill runner also, so I make sure I have to, you know, bring my stuff when I'm tackling him. Uh, but it's iron sharpening iron. And, and with that, with that competition every day, that's going to lead us into having a great season uh, this year because we're, we have to work every day and we're constantly making each other better. We'll take the next one from Eric Gullickson, WITN TV, please. Hey, guys, you know, fall camp starting next week. You know, how do you guys keep your focus on <clears throat> the overall development with that NC State game looming and a lot of hype already building around that game? How do you guys – plan to kind of attack fall camp, I guess. Well, we're, we're not really paying attention to the hype because the hype, it can be negative if you pay attention to it too much. So like you said, camp starts next week and that's our primary focus is having a great camp. And then once we get through camp, then our, all our attention will be on NC State. Yeah, I kind of top with that. Um, you know, I mean, potentials, nothing unless you turn it into production. I um, mean, we have experience coming back to know that, to know how to get through a fall camp, how to get better um, and get prepared for the season. And we, we've been in those close games and games that we should have won and some games that we have won. So um, just all that experience coming back definitely helps us, you know, getting through camp and uh, you know, preparing ourselves for the first game and the games after that. Okay, the next one will go to Patrick Johnson, 94.3 the game, please. All right, uh, for Miles with Blake Harrell coming back uh, for a third year, just just defensively, how, how much more multiple and versatile do you feel the defense is? And then after miles of time, I'd like to just ask Holton a, a different question. Okay. Um, yeah, so with, with Coach Harrell coming back, this is the third year in the defense now. And with that, the guys on – all the guys on the defense have just a certain level of confidence that we really never had before. Um, and now it's not just knowing your position and knowing the roles and responsibilities of your position, but now we're learning everybody's position. So we're all working on – the same uh, same platform, we're all working as like a fine tune machine. And I feel like that will definitely carry over into this season. You saw it uh, the second half of last season, defense was rolling strong. And we're gonna, we're gonna carry that, that momentum into this year, to camp. Holden, I, I know you uh, maybe unfortunately or unfairly sometimes have to burden a lot of uh, 
responsibility uh, being the hometown uh, player. But as you go into this season, could you just elaborate on your expectations and, and, and really enjoying a final season in a Pirate uniform? Yeah, I mean, I knew when I committed here when I was 17 years old that there was going to be a lot of pressure here. But, um, you know, I wanted it to be on me and no one else. Um, you know, Coach Houston came in and has developed a great culture here, a great team culture to um, to really counter that. Um, and it's been it's been really good to be a part of it. Um, and, and, you know, I think this year, I mean, he said it too, and our players have too, it's the best team overall that we've had. Um, we've been in the games. We've been close there. And, um, I mean, I think that this year um, we just go out there and play the way that, that we know we can play and the rest will take care of itself. But um, for it being my last year, you know, I am, I mean, I am going to enjoy it as much as I can. And uh, I mean, just really appreciate, you know, every, there's going to be a lot of laughs for me this year. As, as for Miles, really, it's his last year too. So um, just enjoying it. It's taking it one game at a time, one practice at a time. I mean, it starts with camp and just getting the team as, as close as we can be to being ready um, for that first game and then going out there and playing good uh, the whole season. Holton Miles, we appreciate the time. Good luck this season as you kick things off September 3rd against North Carolina State. Appreciate it. Thanks Thank for you guys. Us. Go Pirates. Go Pirates.